Welcome again, everybody, to the EET 1104-1134 class this Wednesday, the 1st of April. Uh, we're going to do a test review. Uh, actually, it's for chapters 9 and 8. Uh, so, uh, when we talk about test review for chapters 9 and 8, let's think about some of the topics that we have covered here in the last few weeks. Well, one topic that's uh, <clears throat> important to us is mesh analysis. And another one is loop analysis. In uh, mesh analysis, we draw current loops and we sum voltages for each loop. For nodal analysis we circle the nodes and then we sum the currents. Okay, that's, that's the main idea from chapter 8. And then chapter 9 we expand on this a little bit and we get into our network theorems. We have superposition. <clears throat> and that's where we eliminate the power supply. Or possibly power supplies depending upon the case. Analyze the circuit. then redo the circuit, dropping out the rest of the power supplies, and add in the ones previously taken out <clears throat> then we get into the rest of the chapter 9 and we have something called Thevenin's theorem and then Norton theorem and the Thevenin theorem we remove the load resistance and ask what is the voltage across the gap. <clears throat> now, since we're looking for a voltage, we are most likely <clears throat> going to perform nodal analysis. Not necessarily always, but you know, probably over 90% of the time when we're looking for a, a voltage at uh, two points or two nodes in the circuit, we're going to do nodal analysis. Okay, so that's the most common tool that we're going to use when we do Thevenin analysis. In Norton analysis, we remove the load.
We remove the load resistor and we replace it with a wire. Then we ask, what is the current in that wire? And since we are looking for a current, we perform most likely mesh analysis. You know, since we're looking for a current, let's do mesh analysis. And that's the most direct way to the answer, again, probably over 90% of the time. So when we get to the exam, that, that would be my expectation, that uh, we're definitely going to have Thevenin and Norton circuit problems. And to be able to do a Thevenin circuit, I would expect to see a mesh analysis. If we're excuse me, if we're going to do a Thevenin circuit, I would expect to see a nodal analysis. Sorry about that. And if we're going to do a Norton circuit, I would expect to see a mesh analysis. And so, what are we looking for when we have a Thevenin circuit? Well, I would expect to see an answer with a Thevenin voltage in series with a Thevenin resistor and in series with the load resistor, whatever it is. Then in the Norton circuit, I would expect to see a Norton current in parallel with the Norton resistance and the load resistance. Realizing that R Norton equals R Thevenin which is equal to V Thevenin over I Norton. So, that's kind of the gist of, of what we've done for the last uh, few weeks here doing chapters uh, 8 and 9. And so, <clears throat> Let's, let's create the steps for doing mesh analysis. So, we're going to do mesh analysis. What are the steps? What is the first step? Well, identify the uh, loops which, you know, includes drawing the loops, label the loops, usually it's something like I1, I2, I3, you know, etc. Again, I would not anticipate anything larger than a three loop or three node circuit. If there is such a, such a thing, then it's uh, been an error on my part. And I would apologize that beforehand, but I intend on making an exam that does not have more than three loops or three nodes, because many of you uh, have calculators that uh, will not do anything larger than a three by three equation. Okay, so we identify the loops, we draw them the same direction, right? Don't want to forget that part. Same direction. If you draw one loop clockwise, they all need to be clockwise. If you draw one loop anti-clockwise, they all need to be anti-clockwise. Give the loops a name. And then we're going to sum 
voltages. And we do that by doing Mr. Ohm's IR equation. We multiply the loops times all the resistors, or multiply the loop currents by all the resistors in the loop, add those together, and sum the voltages of the IRs, and they will equal zero. So we write those equations and put the equations into a matrix. And you know, let the calculator solve. And we have nodal analysis. And in nodal analysis, what is step one? You know, circle the nodes. And just a note to make to yourself, make sure to follow the wires until you get to an up to an a component so in other words let's say we have a you know a circuit like this and it goes up here, and we got something like that, and something like that. You know, I make sure I get my loops next to the components before I finish them, and start down here, follow the wire, follow the wire, whoops, follow the wire all the way here. You know, I might make sure I collect all the wire I can in my in my node encirclement okay and then step two give a name to the nodes you know usually something like v1 v2 v3 etc Again, I wouldn't expect to see anything with more than three unknown nodes in it. Then we sum the currents and when we sum the currents they're equal to zero and according to Ohm's law current equals V over R. So we go from one node to the next node, subtracting any voltages in between, divide by the sum total resistances on the wire. So we write those equations, put equations in the matrix, and let the calculator solve. So in other words, what's going to be on the exam? At a minimum, I would expect a superposition problem. I would expect a mesh analysis problem. A nodal analysis problem.
after noble analysis, um, we have Thevenin circuit, and then we have a Norton circuit. And perhaps what is most important of all, a maximum power transfer question. Or two. Um, so, minimum of six problems on the exam. And that sounds about right. And I've been debating this, and I think I've changed my mind on on how I want to do the exam. I'm just not real comfortable about turning the exam over to Canvas. So this is what I'm going to do. Friday morning. I will send an email out to each student so this is Friday morning the day of the exam I will send an email out to each student there will be a Word document attached. That document will be your test. midnight on Friday to email the exam back. I mean, it can be returned to me in Word. It can be a PDF, it can be written in hand, it can be written in Word, you can do it in paintbrush, you know, whatever, whatever works for you. Um, Matter of fact, I use paintbrush to draw all the circuits. So if you're familiar with using paintbrush, it'd be real easy just to copy and paste as needed. And then you can draw your, your loops and your uh, nodes and everything just using paintbrush if you want to do that. You could even label things in paintbrush. You know, I find paintbrush easy to use. Uh, some of you may not necessarily, but I'm not saying do the exam in, in paintbrush, just whatever works for you. And then, you know, either take a good quality picture with your phone, run it into in a scanner and make a PDF, or do all the work in Word and paintbrush or whatever, but somehow make sure that file is emailed back to me by midnight on Friday. Okay, the exam will be open book. It's basically a take home exam. Yeah. And 
and so I always, you know, it's always a risk when you do a take-home exam. One of the risks is students overthink. That is probably one of the most likely errors I see students make on take-home exams. They start to second-guess themselves. They start to overthink the problem. They come up with a solution and think, oh, that solution can't be right, let me do something else. And then they wind up spending hours working what is a simple problem. One of the first uh, take-home exams I did a number of years ago with students. I sent it home over them for the weekend thinking uh, a student should take six to eight hours to work that exam. Not that I'm saying you should take six to eight hours on this exam. I'm going to give a regular 50-minute exam in my mind, or maybe an hour-long exam. But one of the students came back the next Monday was just furious with me. Uh, she had spent an enorm enormous amount of time. Uh, I think uh, the exam was over something like four or five days, a long weekend or something like that. And she came back and said she'd worked somewhere between 40 or 50 hours in that exam and, and couldn't find any answers and was about ready to, you know, to take me to, to town on that. So, and that was not in my intention for students to do that at all. Do not overthink this exam. It's just a regular exam. I'm just giving you more time to work it. Um, so, um, it's open book. You should see it sometime by 9 o'clock Friday morning, and you'll have till midnight that night to work the exam. And whatever format works for you. Make sure you show your work. You know, and make it legible, and make it easy to follow. If you're scribbling all over the sheet of paper, you've got plenty of time, rewrite the problem. Make sure I can follow your work. I'm not going to be able to work with you face to face on the next following day to answer any questions about my grading or anything like that. So make it easy for me to grade. Minimize me not catching details. You know, work in a consecutive order down the page. You can, you know, it's a Word document, you can always add blank pages and put more work in it. Um, so, I can't emphasize that enough. Show me your work. And then there, let me just end this with uh, uh, one concern that I have. Uh, I see many students who are not um, turning any labs into me or turning in homework to me. Uh, that is of a great concern to me. Um, you know, this is, I understand that under the present circumstances, it may be hard for some of us to, um, uh, to do the things that we need to do uh, in regard to keeping up with work. There may be other things going on in your life. Uh, but uh, please, some of you are, are getting way behind in uh, course material. Uh, homework is still a very important part of your grade along with the labs. Let's make sure we're getting those turned in. Uh, again, if you have any questions, please email me, uh, and I will get back to you as, as soon as possible. Have a good uh, uh, study and prep time for Friday, and uh, we'll see how everybody does.